Hello everyone, and welcome to a special storytelling session on my channel. Today, we have not one, but two powerful and emotionally charged stories that we'll be sharing with you. These stories will take you on a roller coaster of emotions, from heart-wrenching moments to uplifting revelations. They touch upon important themes like survival, redemption, and the enduring human spirit. So, whether you're a long-time subscriber or just stumbling upon our channel, I encourage you to buckle up for a journey of storytelling that you won't soon forget. Without further ado, let's immerse ourselves in the first tale, Surviving the Shadows, a Rwandan genocide survivor's tale, followed by From Blind Rage to Redemption, a father's journey. These stories are sure to leave you with a lot to ponder and reflect upon. So, sit back, relax, and let's begin this storytelling adventure. Surviving the Shadows a Rwandan genocide survivor's tale. In the quiet, dimly lit living room, the air hung heavy with the weight of memories. The young grandchild, Timmy, sat at the feet of his grandmother, Immaculé, as she rocked back and forth in her old creaky chair. Shadows danced on the walls, casting eerie shapes that seemed to reach out for the past. Grandma, can you tell me about the time when you survived the Rwandan genocide? Timmy asked in a hushed voice his eyes wide with anticipation. Immaculé took a deep, trembling breath and began her story. It was a dark time, my dear, she whispered, her voice cracking with emotion. A time of unspeakable horror. As she spoke, the room seemed to grow colder, and the very walls seemed to absorb her painful memories, echoing her words. It was in the spring of 1994, Immaculé continued, her eyes gazing into the distance as if reliving the nightmare. Tensions had been building for years between the Hutus and the Tutsis. I was a young woman then, with dreams of a peaceful future. She described the days leading up to the genocide, how fear and paranoia hung in the air like a dense fog. Neighbour turned against neighbour and friends became strangers. The streets were filled with hatred and violence, and the night was illuminated by the flames of burning homes. One night, the militia came to our village, Immaculé said, her voice quivering. They were armed with machetes and hatred in their eyes. They came to our home, and I hid in a tiny crawl space beneath the floorboards. I could hear them searching, their voices filled with anger and cruelty. Timmy clutched his grandmother's hand, his heart racing with fear. What did you do, Grandma? Immaculé's eyes filled with tears as she continued. I prayed, my child. I prayed that they wouldn't find me. I prayed for a miracle. For hours she remained hidden in the cramped space, her heart pounding in her chest. She could hear the screams of her family members and neighbours being slaughtered above, their cries for mercy echoing in her ears. The stench of death and the sound of brutality seemed to permeate the very air she breathed. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, there was a knock on the door. The militia members were called away to another location, leaving Immaculé trembling in her hiding place. She knew it was a close call, a miracle that had spared her life. They never found me, Timmy, Immaculé whispered, her eyes haunted by the memories. But I had to stay hidden for weeks, surviving on scraps of food and water, listening to the horror unfold outside. It was a nightmare that I can never forget. As Immaculé's voice faded, a heavy silence settled over the room. Timmy could feel the weight of his grandmother's pain and the horror of the Rwandan genocide. He squeezed her hand tightly, offering silent support. Never forget, Timmy, Immaculé said, her voice filled with a mixture of sadness and determination. Never forget the darkness that can consume humanity, but also remember the strength of the human spirit to survive and persevere. The room remained cloaked in silence, a testament to the horrors of the past and the resilience of a survivor. Timmy would carry his grandmother's story with him, a reminder of the atrocities of history and the importance of never letting them be repeated. From Blind Rage to Redemption, A Father's Journey In a small modest living room filled with the warm glow of an evening sun, a young boy named Michael sat with his father David. As the boy's curiosity grew with each passing year, he finally found the courage to ask his father about a dark chapter in their family's history, the Rwandan genocide. Dad, Michael began hesitantly. I've been learning about the genocide at school. What happened back then? Were we involved? 
David's face darkened as he glanced at the family photo on the mantel, a photo that included a much younger version of himself, standing with a group of men, their faces twisted in blind rage. He took a deep breath, his hands trembling slightly. Yes, Mikkel, David confessed, his voice heavy with regret. I was there, and I was one of the people who participated in those terrible events. Mikhail's was shocked, his heart heavy with disbelief. But why, Dad? Why would you do that? David looked down at his hands, his mind drifting back to those dark days. It's a painful story, son, he began, his voice cracking with emotion. I was filled with blind rage at the time. The propaganda and hatred had consumed me, and I believed the lies that were being spread. He described how he had been swept up in the mob mentality, how he had blindly followed the orders of ruthless leaders who manipulated the masses with fear and hatred. He spoke of the atrocities he had witnessed, the lives he had taken, and the innocent people he had hurt. His words hung heavy in the air, like a confession long overdue. But then, David continued, his voice softening, I began to see the truth. I started to question the lies I had believed for so long. I realised that the people we were hurting were just like us. Mothers, fathers and children who deserved to live in peace. Tears welled up in David's eyes as he recalled the turning point in his life. I couldn't live with the guilt any longer, Mikhail. I knew I had to change, to seek redemption for the terrible things I had done. David explained how he had left the militia and dedicated his life to helping survivors and working towards reconciliation. He had found solace in the arms of forgiveness, seeking forgiveness from the people he had harmed and forgiving himself for the atrocities he had committed. Michael listened intently, his young heart struggling to understand the depths of his father's remorse. "'What can I learn from your story, Dad?' he asked quietly. David looked at his son with a mixture of sadness and hope. "'You can learn never to follow the mob blindly, Michael,' he said firmly. "'Question the narratives, the leaders and the beliefs that seek to divide and dehumanise. Always strive to see the humanity in others, even in the face of hatred.' As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the room, David and Michael shared a solemn moment of understanding and healing. David's journey from blind rage to redemption served as a powerful reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is the potential for change and the possibility of finding one's way back to the light. Thanks for watching. To support us, please like and subscribe.